Hello my dear friends, and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. This is a very special video. The social media embargo is lifted on The Bad Batch Season 3, so those who received screeners for the first 8 episodes were allowed to share their thoughts online. I've compiled some of the best ones with the most juicy details. I want to start by saying, light spoiler warning, there is some allusion in some of these reviews to what we can expect cameo-wise, easter egg-wise, general themes, and connections to the wider saga. But no more jibber-jabber, let's begin. Our first review comes from Star Wars Holocron. They do have a pretty big social media presence on X, and they said this, The Bad Batch Season 3 Episodes 1 to 8 are phenomenal. Mature tone, with a focus on overarching plot, instead of one-off stories. This will come as fantastic news to those who criticised the first two seasons for going on too many side quests, away from the main story. Season 3 is far more focused from the word go. They say the season ties the entire saga together, from the prequel trilogy, to the Mandalorian, and the rise of Skywalker. Now this is the comment that is most interesting to me, because a few weeks ago I did kind of suspect, with what Palpatine is doing, trying to expand the security of the future of the Empire, speaking to the chief scientist Dr. Hemlock, and when I spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, some Star Wars fans really hated the idea, saying they don't want anything tying into the sequel trilogy, all the shows and movies before it need to avoid it. But the writing's been on the wall for a long time, my dear friends. And when you have the combination of Palpatine and cloning in the same show, it's kind of inevitable they're going to go there to some extent. And by the sounds of this review, as well as a couple of others we're going to look at, that seems to be confirmed. They finish by providing a very heartwarming tease. Omega and Crosshair are the show's heart. The two characters begin the season stuck on Mount Tantis. And we saw from the clip confined. They're gonna have to work things out, talk to each other, probably negotiate about how to escape, even if Crosshair is reluctant at first. And then they say, Palpatine has never been scarier. We're gonna see the true nature of his monstrous mind, his obsession with midichlorians, preventing death, immortality, as he teased in Revenge of the Sith, and as I say, what is paid off later in episode 9. Moving on to our next review. This one is from Cinema Blend's Adam Holmes. Having seen the first eight episodes of The Bad Batch Season 3, I'm pleased to say the show's final hurrah is off to a great start. Fans of Omega and Crosshair especially have a lot to look forward to, and as per usual, the action and emotional beats are balanced wonderfully, and once again a lot of praise for the interactions between Omega and Crosshair. He's taking centre stage. Our next review comes from LRM Online. They said this, the first half of The Bad Batch Season 3 sets up a climactic ending. Fans of the series will be happy with the storyline and the cameos of fan-favourite characters. So by the sounds of things, the cameos are right from the word go. Not that they matter as much as the story, but in a final season of the show, I wouldn't expect anything less. And this time, we don't have to wait until the second half. Moving on to our next review, this one comes from Ashley Saunders, a writer and critic for CBR. She said the following, the Bad Batch is back, and our favourite defective and effective clones are delivering a spectacle fans are going to love. Higher stakes, an incredible animation, easter eggs, cameos, and other surprises. It's an epic ride so far, and I'm so not ready to say goodbye. Another powerful review, and if the first 8 episodes are this good, we're in for an absolute treat in the second half as well, which is a secret to everyone. The reviewers only got the first 8. Our next review comes from Maggie Lovett of Collider, and last year they were very brutally honest. With their season 2 review, they weren't afraid to say there was a mixture of good and bad. So this is reassuring that this time, they're convinced Lucasfilm Animation, Jennifer Corbett, and the entire team on The Bad Batch has given us their best. She said this, I've seen the first 8 episodes of The Bad Batch, and it's truly a case of they saved the best for last. Season 3 is the best yet of the series, and a much darker turn. Lots of twists, lots of heart, fun returns, and some quote, huge Star Wars lore connections. I do wonder what this is in reference to. Is it Dark Disciple, Asajj Ventress, Quinn and Voss? Or could it be to do with Emperor Palpatine? Maybe they're drawing inspiration from the expanded universe, Dark Empire, something like that. Keep in mind, Mount Tantis originated in the pages of Star Wars Legends. Now would be a fantastic time to draw parallels and connections. Famous leaker Jordan Mason said this, was able to watch the first eight episodes of season three, and folks, this season ain't messing around. It's firing on all cylinders, 
and pretty much cemented this as my favourite Star Wars animated series. Mama's Geeky said this, The Bad Batch Season 3 has already given me literal chills, multiple times. I've seen the first 8 episodes, and if they continue this way, I'll be a happy camper. Stakes are high, visuals are stunning, action is intense, and treachery is abound. Cannot wait for more. The next one comes from Kyle Avery. I've seen the first 8 episodes, and it's great stuff. All the most interesting plot threads and character arcs from the first two seasons are pulling together, and headed towards what is sure to be an epic finale. The animation and kind of music are fire as always. More encouraging stuff, and by the sounds of all of these reviews, they don't leave anything ambiguous. From the word go, the direction of where the season starts, and where it's going, where it's going to end, is made pretty clear. And here is another review that corroborates this. Adam Blevins. Season 3 is some of the best animated Star Wars ever. It strikes the perfect balance between Adventure of the Week and the overarching story. It's really grounded in its characters, but also very clearly building towards something huge. Again, huge, in capital letters. First 8 episodes are fantastic. It's really great to hear these reviews. I haven't come across a single bad one. This repeated idea amongst fans who've seen these episodes, that the final season is doing the first two justice. It's been described as a love letter, a victory lap of sorts. Our final review comes from that hashtag show. The Bad Batch season 3 may be the best of the three seasons. Unsurprising, that seems to be the consensus. You will take an emotional journey as loyalty and friendships are tested. So maybe some bickering, maybe some division amongst our beloved clones. You can feel the first 8 episodes are leading to something big. Again, episode 8 finishes just before the Harbinger, an episode rumoured to be very indicative of the direction of the second half. Clones finding out what the deal is. Some pretty horrific stuff to come with the clones, I'm sure. It's going to be a heck of a ride. But those are some of the earliest reviews, the highlights. I'm more pumped than ever before. Just over a week to go. Share your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think season 3 is building up to based on the trailer, based on these comments, everything concerning Palpatine? Let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, my dear friends, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. May the Force be with you, always.